I am beyond stoked to be the first person to tell you guys that Super Slicer has a hot, fresh new beta that is available today. The absolute coolest thing about my YouTube career is that it has landed me on the Super Slicer dev team. And today I'm announcing our new public beta. We know that it's been a minute. Uh, the last major release was last July. And we want to get those updates out to you guys, but you know, sometimes life can get in the way, but we're working as hard as we can. And if you see me looking off the camera, I'm just checking my script. I don't have my normal teleprompter today, so bear with me on that. Today's beta is going to bring us up to Prusa Slicer 2.7. And through 25 private alpha builds, we were able to fix over 200 bugs and add some new features along the way. Editing pockets here. Uh, during filming this, I actually figured out two more bugs and there were a couple more that we found. So we did a 26th release. So we're constantly trying to make this thing better. There's a new website too where we're gonna post updates when they're available. And we wanna make the website an active place where you can get updates, send feedback, and maybe learn a little too. You will also find a form where you can request to be part of the team. We're actively looking for people who have filament changers, tool changers, IDEX machines, that kind of a thing, so that way we can do some testing. And we would love to get some help with documentation, so that way we can build out a nice full documentation suite. Within the next week or so, the website should also have a new features and donations section. The team is actively working to get that up. Here, you can submit some features that you wanna be voted on or donated towards to get them added into future builds. But please, if you're gonna submit, we don't want things that are just add this feature. We wanna see why you want it added and the functionality that it should add. Please be detailed in these requests. Once those requests are sorted through, you can vote on the smaller ones to add into the slicer, but the bigger tasks are gonna need sponsorship donations which that money goes directly towards the developers. Something else I can share with you guys is that we're working on the ability to offer commercial support with Super Slicer, and that'll be handled with advanced 3D printing. Over the past few months, our team has worked hard to bring you guys this new build. And there are people from all over the world on this team who are putting in their spare time, coordinating through all these different time zones, and it's been really awesome to see. We do have a short roadmap we can share for the next few releases after this beta, it's a little bit number heavy, so bear with me. The dev team is already in the lab cooking up a bug fix release of 2761.1 and the next major release of 2762, which will be a feature release, potentially maybe multi-plate, some stuff like that. And then the next major release will be 2963, which will catch us up to Prusa Slicer 2.9. And you can expect bug fix releases in between where the fourth digit gets incremented. There is a lot to look forward to with the future of Super Slicer, and I hope you guys are as excited as we are. Now, if you aren't familiar with Super Slicer, we like to think of it as a Prusa Slicer on steroids. Super Slicer aims to give you as much control over your slicing as possible, and there is so much that you can do with it. If you're newer to slicing, it might be a bit of an overload, but there's a lot to learn from these settings, just playing around with them and just seeing what they can do. This is also why we're working to build out the documentation section on the website, so that way everyone can learn what it is their slicer is doing. With that, Let's jump in and look at some of the new features that have been added since the last major release. Since this includes up to Prusa Slicer 2.7, that means all of the things from 2.6 and 2.7 are included, like SVG embossing, G2 and G3 art commands, custom G code editor, ramping lifts, object labeling, and all the other goodies, as well as some bug fixes, not just from Prusa, but from the Super Slicer dev team as well. Tell me how I forgot organic supports. You know, that's a big one that everyone's going to be excited to see. And of course, all the granular control that you've come to expect from Super Slicer. And if you've never used it before, that is what Super Slicer is known for. Since some of you might be hearing about Super Slicer for the first time, I figured I'd cover some of the settings that I use the most, but I can't get anywhere else. Jumping into the slicer here, the first thing I want to cover is gap fill min and max width, min surface, and length you can really dial in exactly where you want the gap fill to be. There are places that you might want gap fill and places that you might not want gap fill. Instead of just turning it off and on, you can actually tune where it is that you want it to be. And similarly, small perimeter min and max length, as well as speed. You can see looking at speed, it's kind of all over the place in this section of the print. If I change it to something bigger, so it includes more perimeter, there you go. It evens out the speed for the whole section of small perimeters that are within that max length. Enforcing overhang speed for a certain number of perimeters. This can be super useful when you really wanna slow down sections of a print 
to make sure that it's printed well and the overhang is well cooled. Instead of just slowing down the outer layer, you're slowing down all those walls that are inside as well, so that way you can make sure that part is printed correctly. I use this one all the time. Removing perimeters on bridges. You may not want those unsupported perimeters and only want bridges, or you wanna keep them, whatever you wanna do, you have multiple settings here where you can really dial it in. There's a lot of stuff in here and I can and probably should make an entire video covering all that you can do with Super Slicer, but especially for people who've never used it before, I kind of wanted to show you the, the granular control that you can get with Super Slicer. They say that like 80% of the work is done with 20% of the tool or however that phrase is said. And this is similar to programs like Photoshop and Blender where you have all these settings and you might not ever need them, but I'm glad that they're there because I'd rather have them and not need them than need them and not have them. And this is really what makes Super Slicer awesome. You can really dial it in and get print profiles that are specific to models and not just generalized. I've come to expect a level of control that I just can't get anywhere else. Myself and Jay Bima, who really helped organize this whole thing, want to give a special shout out and thank you to all the sponsors who have donated towards the project, as well as the entire dev team, and especially the legend himself, Super Merrill, who's the main dev of Super Slicer. We just want to thank you guys for all your hard work, being accepting and supportive of the new dev team and the new dynamics, and especially Merrill, we know it's challenging, but we just want to thank you guys for, for everything you've done for Super Slicer. Well, hopefully you guys are excited about the new beta and you're going to try it out. Join the Discord, check the new website, and be sure to fill out that form if you want to join the team. And at the end of the day, whatever slicer you choose, you should choose Super Slicer. If you subscribe, though, your prints will always come out buttery smooth. I'll see you guys in the next one.